I'm Tamara Minia and we're at the University of Southampton in the Psychology Department and this is Hazel Blythe. Um, we're working on a research project looking at visual search in x-ray images and we've got about five people working on that project. When faced with a baggage x-ray, airport security screeners have to search for threat items within a complex environment. So as a vision scientist, this is an interesting situation. We already understand how the human visual system can allow us to search for one kind of object at a time. For example, if I'm looking for a friend in a crowd, I might have a mental image of their hair colour or the colour of their shirt, and maintaining that information in my head allows me to get them out of the crowd. Um, but the situation faced by airport security screeners is a more complicated one. They need to search for multiple kinds of items at a time, so they need to search for guns, for knives and for explosives. So we were interested in how the visual system copes with searching for multiple types of objects at the same time. Metals um, and guns and explosives, guns and explosives show up as different colours in X-ray images. Um, can the human visual system cope with representing both of these colours at the same time? So in order to research this question, we need to find out where people are looking at in the image. What people are looking at in the image tells us what representation or template they're holding in their heads. So if, for example, somebody's looking at a lot of blue items, we can tell that the template in their heads contains blue. So in order to find out what they're looking at, we measure eye movements. So here we've got the eye tracking equipment. Um, so the participant would put their head in this location here. They would be looking at the display on the computer screen. And the camera, using infrared, will measure the position of their eyes. And then behind me, we've got the, con the control computer where the experiment will be controlled from. So when we measure eye movements in these kind of searches, we find that when people are searching for guns, they look at predominantly blue items in the display because metals show up as blue in X-ray images. When they're searching for bombs, they look at orange items in the display because um, explosives show up as orange. But when they're searching for guns and bombs, at and they look at a disproportionately large number of non-target-like objects. So, for example, they might look at green, green items. In because we are interested in conducting basic research about the human visual system, we're not using airport screeners as, as our participants, but are using volunteer participants that come into the lab to run the experiment under controlled conditions. This research tells us that the human visual system cannot effectively represent and search for two different objects at the same time as effectively as it can search for those items separately. So the research indicates that the best way, to, if you're looking for two items at the same time, the best way to do that uh, would be to either search the image for one item and then stop that search and research it for the second item so you're only having to hold one item in your head at a time. Or to split the search between two people so that you have the same image searched by one person for one item and by the other person for the other one. So you've heard some of the theory behind the research that we do and now Hazel's going to show us around the lab and show us how that research is conducted. Okay, so obviously we, we only want to measure one of her eyes, so we've just got the right eye on the screen at the minute and I'm just going to check the focus of the camera and we can see individual eyelashes, so that looks really good. And I'm just going to check the light levels to make sure we've got the right amount of light coming into her eye and it's less light than you would get outside on a bright day so it's completely harmless. And it's just an infrared beam so it can get the reflections off the various surfaces in her eyeball. So that's basically now set up and measuring where she looks. So if she looks at the top left corner of the screen, the top right corner and so on, we can see that it's following her eye. Okay, so now we've got, we've got Tammy set up so we have the focus and the light levels adjusted. So we're going to take a calibration which is where we ask her to look at a series of dots on the screen and we measure the position of her eye as it rotates for each of those, those positions. And it's just building an, an association between the angle of her eye and the positions. And we've done that once, now we check it for accuracy. And after this, if we get an accurate validation, then we know that when we say she's looking at a particular spot, she really was looking there, and we can go on to a trial. That looks great, so we can now move on to a trial. And so we're going to get Tammy in a second to search for either a blue or an orange tea so now in the display. One. I'm going to get her to start looking at some T's and L's and she's going to be looking for an orange T and we're going to see whether how easily she can find it in this array. And she's making a decision every time as to whether the target's present or absent. So at the moment she's just looking for orange T's so it's quite easy but if the next time we get her to do it we ask her to look for orange or blue 
it becomes a bit more difficult and she's spending a bit more time searching because she's trying to maintain two mental representations at once. She's trying to maintain a representation of an orange tea and a blue tea and it becomes a bit more tricky.